Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we're going to a brand new installment of This Week in EDM, Ring Over Songs that came out this week in EDM. As always, there is a link down below for all the songs in a Spotify playlist for easy access listening. And also, as always, this is just my opinion. Don't take them as gospel truth. Uh, but let's start off with the bad category. Do you really want to live we got David Guetta, Alphaville, and Ava Max with Forever Young. Yes, it is another useless and unnecessary EDM remix cover that didn't really need to happen. I'll give David some credit for bringing on Alphaville for this one, at least the original creators of the song, but um, it's still generic kind of commercial garbage that is void of any creativity. Um, also, why is Ava Max even on here, especially when you have the original musicians in Alphaville? I just don't get it. Then we've got Dylan Francis featuring DJ Snake with Get Low, the Armin Van Buren remix from the new 10-year anniversary of Money Sucks Friends Rule album by Dylan Francis. And uh, yeah, maybe back then I would have enjoyed this a little bit more, but I don't love the kind of random slowdown, short length, and refusal to really do anything interesting with this remix. Um, this kind of new one drop is essentially just a big techno drop that already sounds outdated. <laughs> Then we got Company and Ivory featuring Rad Flip Note with Jackpot, a heavy dubstep tune that, with this kind of gambling narrative that's entirely unnecessary, especially because it plays both sides of the coin. I thought the kind of lyrics didn't really need to be there and the production was too generic for me. <laughs> Then we got Jero featuring Solil with Need You Close. Uh, this is kind of just house for the sake of house, uh, very lackluster in structure, mixing, and creativity. The builds kind of lead into a drop with no energy or creative flow to it. This is one of the most kind of generic, more, yeah, kind of standard Jero tracks I've heard to date, maybe. Then we got Aura with To You. I would say I'm quite underwhelmed by this track, honestly. Very much is trying to hit on that kind of bass house trap itch that Isonok has been scratching all year, and it just doesn't really do it justice. The kicks are pretty flat, and the mixing left a lot of energy of the track uh, in the studio rather than on the dance floor. <laughs> Then we're moving into the meh category with Control Freak's Exhale, uh, an intensely in-your-face and sporadic new dubstep tune that rides the line between that dubstep sound and sort of rhythm at many points, uh, much to my dismay, I would say. This kind of jittery, screechy sound design is not one that I particularly resonate with, but um, yeah, there are tracks that sound very similar to this that have hit for me, but this one is kind of lacking that prominent bass line to keep me coming back. <laughs> Then we got Whipped Cream with Intro Call, the start of Whipped Cream's newest Caroline era, which we aren't really sure how that's going to play out with branding-wise, um, but this is the kind of first introduction to that Caroline character era um, that begins with this sort of intro call. Um, I get having this kind of as an EP or album opener um, to establish what's to come later, but released as a single uh, with nothing else to it, it's kind of a little strange that there isn't a whole ton going on narratively because this is the start of the narrative and we haven't heard the rest of the narrative yet, so I don't really get the song yet. <laughs> Then we've got Vice Tone with Celebrate. Vice Tone might still be finding their groove, um, but this is a vast improvement over their last couple releases. The mixing actually sounds pretty competent and the lead melody doesn't give me a headache. Uh, this is still very much generic house, but hey, they're just, they're, they're working their way back up to their dominance, right? 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 <laughs> Then we've got Gil Glaze and Afrojack with Don't Go, a simple and minimalistic garage tune with a short runtime. Uh, otherwise, not a whole ton going on here, but it does sound pretty clean. I'm surprised to hear this from these artists, Afrojack in particular, but um, hey, it's not too bad. <laughs> Kylie Minogue with Someone For You from the new Tension 2 album, uh, a song that's kind of baked in nostalgia from its structure, vocal inflection, and kind of faint disco elements, but it's all kind of covered in this generic house production that both takes away some of the energy, doesn't really match the tone of the rest of the tune for me. Then we've got Martin Garrix and Sam Vox featuring Jemmy with uh, Gravity. And I would say this is another pretty underwhelming commercial house track with uh, not much to keep the listener really engaged over repeat listens. It's a more by the book, simple track with a melody that sounds pretty outdated, honestly. <laughs> Then we've got Ace Aura with Ephemeral from the new Ephemeral EP. This is a nice color-based tune, uh, but one that is very much in the grand scheme of Ace Aura's discography, uh, pretty similar territory and one that sounds a lot like some of his other tracks. So for me, this is just lands here. <laughs> 
more plastic with Sabotage, a lovely drum step tune with a bit of a jittery lead melody. I just wanted a little something more, like an extended movement or an additional kind of element um, in that back end of the track. So for me, this one kind of just was okay, might have maybe landed in good on a good day. Now we're moving into the good category with Godlands featuring Emski with Desire from the new double-sided single of Hybrid Trap Hits from Godlands. Um, nothing too crazy or out of this world with this new one, just a well put together, well mixed and produced trap cut. Then we've got If Found with Follow from the new Worth the Crash EP, another kind of more club festival oriented track from this EP. And I absolutely adore the kind of final bright and light movements that gives the whole track a sense of finality to it. Um, I didn't love the first bit of the track, but the ending is, is quite operatic and fantastic. <laughs> And we got Blank and Riot with Revival for intense kind of heavy dubstep. Um, this collab does kind of go hard. It's a little same samey at some points, but is generally a solid track with a fresh melody and sound design. We got Rez and X1Y2 with Proximate from their new collaborative EP, Novus. Some of Rez's kind of better mid-tempo tracks, I would say to date, you've got that kind of classic dark brooding atmosphere, but with these kind of added digital elements sprinkled all throughout that really keeps the track from being just another generic Rez song. <laughs> Then we've got Caster with Moonlight, a more simplistic, less atmospheric liquid drum and bass tune from Caster. I do think it's a solid track with great mixing and stellar production. This is just another just solid, great, well-produced drum and bass tune. <laughs> And we got Reaper with Surfacing from the new Challenger Deluxe. And uh, yeah, this is another strong dance floor D&B track from Reaper that does sound like a majority of the rest of his discography, but this one does pack quite the punch. And I think without the vocals, this wouldn't have slapped as hard as I think it did. <laughs> We got ISOXO and Fuzi with Star Sound Part 2 from the new Kids Gone Mad IRL sort of deluxe version of the album. Uh, this is a singular drop, more melodic version of the iconic original track. Uh, other than the lead melody, a majority of the song follows the same rhythms and notes of the original, which isn't a bad thing in this case. Um, I do think the, the original is still a stronger song, though, and I would say actually much stronger than this one, even though this is still solid. <laughs> Then we got Cloud Nun Direct and Mr. Fijiwiji with Baby. Uh, always lovely to get triple collabs from these guys, and this is yet another sweet treat of blissful garage production. The track is quite radiant, I would say, in its uplifting energy and bright production elements that are splattered all throughout this thing. This is lovely. Not a whole ton going on, but still sounds fantastic. Then we've got Hello World with Love and War from the new It's All Fair in Love and War EP. This is another kind of electronica meets cinematic track from Hello World with big drum hits and a more kind of choir-like chanting of voices. This particular sound has really been honed in from Hello World as of late, and I think it's marvelous. I think it's working great. Um, his vocal delivery sounds fantastic, and he's kind of extended the length of many of these tracks uh, that have been released as of late. So way to go, Hello World. <laughs> Then we got Conroe with Violet Sky, A Letter For You from the new Violet Sky EP. Uh, this title track is named after Conroe's daughter, which is a beautiful thing. And uh, production wise, Conroe has kind of pulled back the intensity a little bit more. This one uh, opting for a more atmospheric electro pop tune rather than kind of that heavy emphasis on that commanding lead melody or a house beat, which he's done a lot in the past. If anything, this is actually a mixture between his more commercial friendly electro pop house tunes and his kind of classic future based sound. And a name I'm not sure you've heard in a long time. We've got Rebecca Black with Trust. Yes, the Rebecca Black that did Friday. Uh, this is a dark new deep electro house tune that is very much inspired by the success of Charlie XCX latest work. Uh, Rebecca's vocals I think are pretty fine here, but the production on this thing is fantastic. Um, this might be the start of a brand new killer era from Rebecca Black. <laughs> St. Punk with Shadow, Station 6, featuring Matthew Grant uh, from the new Stations album that's out now by St. Punk. And this is crushing drum and bass production with a heavily compressed bass lead and strong punk vocalist there in Matthew. Uh, St. Punk has really found a unique niche for this sound in particular, and I think it's really, really working well for him. There is a lot of overlap here actually from this record, I would say, and the latest Chase and Status mixtape in terms of sound design and drum and bass production, but uh, another fantastic tune. With the party girl gods, oh baby, you mad, watching me win. 
And we've got Charlie XCX with Spring Breakers featuring Kesha. Kesha is hella crass on this thing, and I love it. Uh, really matches the tone of the original, and I think this is a great sort of upgrade over the original. Uh, this is another one of those Brat remixes where the original uh, to the remix is fairly identical. They sound pretty similar, just with a popular vocal feature on top of it. And um, I very much agree with that being the direction that they took this remix in particular, because I think Kesha knocked it out of the park. And then buckle up as we are heading into the standout category and starting with Ghost Data featuring Wymere with Dream Eater, the new single from an upcoming record from Ghost Data. Uh, this is an explosive and dense, like, complextro production with crushing dubstep elements all throughout. Uh, Wymere's vocal feature adds a lot to this track as it very much aligns with his style of production, that being the kind of longer, this one at three and a half, or sorry, five and a half minutes with a kind of simple piano intro and outro section. It just, it, these two worked really well together and this track is fantastic. And speaking of killer collabs, we've got Hudson Lee and Cone Sound with Celestial Egg from the new Light Dancer LP out now by Hudson Lee. Uh, this is a kind of great mixture of down-tempo, IDM, folk, and wonky in a way that I'm not sure I've ever really heard before. It's almost as if Bitbird went mainstream. Um, this track has a beautiful atmosphere with really intentional sound design and instrumentation that really makes it feel like every single second of this track has been meticulously poured over. <laughs> Then we got Virtual Riot with Stealing Fire from the new, well, Stealing Fire album. Uh, dancing an intricate line between bass house and hybrid trap, this title track is my favorite from the new album as it really showcases another side of Virtual Riot that we don't often see as he does a lot of primarily dubstep. Um, this song feels like an homage to Skrillex's Quest for Fire, and I must say it is very much a very fitting homage. <laughs> And finally, we've got Grant with Lush. You knew it was gonna be here. Uh, Grant is back with a new drum and bass tune and this thing is so playful and fun. You can really hear how much fun Grant had making this song in particular. It's very evident in the sound design and the song structure as he kind of pulls back the whole thing for this 30 second outro that wipes away all the digital noise for a very kind of more raw final movement that uh, is a little bit more indie in style and design that um, reminds me a lot of what he's produced for a lot of other artists rather than his own single style or singles released um, under his name. But um, absolutely fantastic track. Love Grant. Love this track. And that's that. Let me know what you guys think about This Week in EDM. Uh, let me know what you think of all songs in the comment section below. But other than that, I'm Dakota from Brotide Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.